It's the mystery shed. This thing's gonna be somebody's treasure hunt. Out here in western Kansas today, big, big farm auction. Guy just retired. Quit when he quit, they said. And everything pretty much just got laid where it fell. On the sale flyer, there were lots of old tractors and motorcycles in the barns. So we'll check it all out. He said after he retired farming, he just collected, filled the barns and sheds. Mostly motorcycles and tools. There's supposed to be a shed out back that they're just selling the entire contents. They didn't even take it out. This old bike had like 6,000 miles on it, which is probably about the equivalent of 300,000 miles if it was a car. Pretty used up. This right here is the tote goat. Kind of a interesting, not quite a motorcycle, but bigger than a mini bike. I guess like scooter size, you'd say. Owner quit farming probably 20 years ago. This is just kind of where everything laid. Interesting fan. No cage, so the blades are painted orange. <laughs> Safety first. Like these old gas cans, I've always kind of collected them. There's probably half a dozen or more different labels they put on them over the years. They have a graphic design that's simple but impactful. Nuts, bolts, hardware, paints, fluids, you name it. It's a really unique early battery charger. Bench top model, kind of neat. Then we got the International Harvester Tombstone Refrigerator. This battery charger, see if there's a name on it. Handy. Good dry place to store welding rod. I really dig this shelf. It's got a neat streamlined look to it. It's like just mostly nails in there. Not a lot of people build too much anymore with nails. We always use deck screws now. Wow, these are super cool truck sideboards. For the Chevrolet trucks, wow. That's pretty rare to find the design series called out like that. Old Cushman motor scooter. Excuse me. <laughs> Yeah. 
I would imagine a lot of these bikes he probably never even rode. Just pick them up at auctions and then stick them away in the shed. Be in pretty good condition. Just need mechanical tinkering from sitting a while. Suzuki still has a bidder number on it from when he bought it. Pretty interesting contraption to say the least. Chain drive. I don't think you would have been able to do that with a shaft drive and still have it balance. Just kind of questionable how it would work. You wouldn't have a differential to be able to turn corners very easy. Just a uh, big question mark and not a whole lot more. Get it running, maybe it would work, maybe it wouldn't. Couple Cushman Trucksters. Looks like that one was used in a salt plant. It's all rusted out. Farmall, International, McCormick, one of those three, little power unit. Somebody needed a generator, that thing probably be pretty simple to operate. Little cub, I would guess. Little Alice Chalmers. These tractors are super common. See about one of these every few months around here at the sales. They must have built and sold millions of them. Tiny little skid loader. Little Two-cylinder Kohler, it looks like. Lahima Manufacturing, South Dakota. Kind of an interesting old relic of its time. Little Ford tractor, nothing special, needing complete mechanical refurbishment after sitting, and it'll probably still bring a lot of money. Thing does really have a good patina to it. Tires are in good shape. This is a decent little tractor. Chevy pickup bed. This is a 54. Because you can see the tops of the bed sides there are flat. Looks in good shape. Tailgate's nice. Just shame they pulled the rear fenders off of it. This one's 
on my list. We'll see what happens. See who shows up. Good original green paint with a pretty good patina on it. Floor's not even rotted out. This guy here. Case. Some extra attachments and equipment on it. Everything pretty intact, just dirty. Engine does turn on that one. It's got decent potential. I called Crazy D on that and the little power unit here. Power unit's stuck. But we'll be bidding on those for him. Kind of hard to tell on a sale like this who's really going to show up. It's kind of one of those where there's like literally almost like one of everything. So you're going to have a broad, broad range of collectors out here looking. And then being a spring sale, just characteristically hard to buy stuff. You got the International Harvester 715 Grain and Maize Special. I don't know what else you'd harvest with the Combine Harvester. <laughs> there it is. This old Ford should be 61. Got the chrome grill in her. Originally green truck. Somebody repainted it red. Got the Y block. That thing even has good compression. F-350, so it's a one-ton. Got the 17.5 rims. Good one-piece non-split rim wheels. Got the custom cab with the deluxe steering wheel there. She's getting some rust in her, but probably usable old truck still if it was fixed up some. I'm sure that brake pedal goes all the way to the floor and fuel's probably stale. Always look on these, the gap between the fender and the door there. See how it's tight at the top and then it widens out there at the bottom. That always means that those floor braces have got rust in them and then the cabs settle. This one's well on its way, but if they get really bad, then it puts the steering column off of its alignment and the clutch Z-bar and linkage. Decent truck, but needs work. This would be the... 73 to 79 Ford. This would be considered a medium duty truck. F600, 370 Lima engine. Sold at Marmies in St. John. It's pretty well known as a Great Bend dealership now. They would have either gotten their start in St. John and moved or maybe had a satellite location, who knows. This 
Just a big old gas monster. Thing like this probably get six miles to the gallon. These old trucks like this, they make pretty big torque. We had one in our fire service for a while. It was a 1982, been the generation after this. But that old truck, it could have probably pulled down a house. But most these farmers now, they run their grain in semis that are diesel and so an old truck like this even running driving ones just really aren't worth a whole lot truck like this some people use them for other things like roofers they'll use them to haul off the old shingles guys that do remodeling or whatever but truck like this it's sat this long realistically probably just be bought by weight see the inside big truck steering column and wheel and then they had a steel dash panel with individual gauges that would have been chromed, but it's all surface rust now. Pack rats have partied hard in here, so that wiring harness and that dash is probably all chewed up. So a truck like this would be a long shot for it to see the road again. Got the split transmission there. For the two-speed axle. These old trucks did a lot of work for their time, but their time's now passed. Really too old to be commercially useful and too new to be collectible, so they're just kind of stuck in a hole there. Cage fan with the Penzoil curb sign base. Base probably be worth more than the fan. Old Conso sewing machine. Thing still moves, but needs work. Ford truck Y block. The ram horn manifolds. Here's rebuilt, but who knows? Little row of primitives. Mechanical floor jack is my favorite piece. I've always been intrigued by those. No hydraulics to go out on them anyway. dozen small engines pick your size pick your brand pick your horsepower it's probably in there little porcelain ice cream sign there in the grain bin these old farmers are pretty resourceful just repurpose anything for whatever job they needed it to do Big old drill press. Pretty good old tool there. This old Chevy truck. Got the military bed on it. It does lift, but... 
It's by this cable with a big winch in the bottom, probably Tulsa winch, I would guess. Kind of an interesting pre-hydraulic setup. It's got a painted grill in it. They said the title was like 1945, so it could have been war production. 216 inline six. Pretty basic engine. Really straight old truck overall. Over here we've got the, I think they said 84 Chevy Impala four-door. This car he said was maybe willed from the guy's uncle and nothing wrong with it. He just drove it to the spot and shut it off. It's a really solid rust free car really straight too i think just a wrinkle in that back driver's door pack rats have partied hard under the hood that looks like really just mainly the wiring harness Had the title, had the keys, so there's probably decent potential for this car. It's just probably one I'd rather, a lot rather have a Caprice. Just be easier to sell. Had a couple of these Impalas and they'll sell eventually, but not, not as quick as a Caprice. 305 V8. I've had a lot of bad luck with 305s locking up. Take a look inside here. Basic crank window, single bench seat. Does have a center armrest. No tilt. Sixty seven to seventy two Chevrolet truck doors. I believe that factory color is cottonwood green. More parts and pieces and tailgates. Blue poly. They had two shades of that blue poly. I can't remember if that's a darker or the lighter one. It's old tractor. Not enough there of it for me to tell what brand it is. Probably some of you tractor guys will know. See they dragged it right out of the shed. That was its resting spot for many decades and today We'll be finding a new home.
Take a quick look through the junk pile behind the barn. Always, always got to look in the piles. Oddball little motorized push mower. Pennsylvania. Made in New Jersey. Interesting little piece. Just because stuff was junk when they put it out here doesn't mean there isn't someone decades later that'll think it's collectible. This old shed, for some reason it got knocked over. I know if when they were pulling all the stuff out of it they might have caught one of the poles or who knows. Kind of a weird old welder thing. Some kind. Yeah, they just knocked her flat. Who knows if that was intentional or if it was an accident. If it was an accident, you hope no one got injured and no equipment got torn up. Every one of these places is kind of a treasure hunt to some degree. Even if everything's been picked out and pulled out for weeks. People have looked through it. You always want to take another look because just with the sheer volume of stuff that's out here, they probably had a chance to miss something or they may look and see something that isn't collectible in their mind, but that actually somebody out there is looking for. There's a very old boot. Things well worn. Oh, pair of boots. Those are kind of cool. Useless but interesting. Good conversation piece. The old appliance pile, 55 Chrysler door, the door handle's actually worth a little bit. Trash or treasure, little of both. Over here, got the lawnmower graveyard. And then behind it, this is the mystery shed. So the deal on the mystery shed, they didn't even clean it out onto the wagons. And so whatever's in here, they're going to sell just all in one lot. And so whoever buys it is going to have a pretty big treasure hunt on their hands. Take a look inside here. Just never know what you'll find in one of these old sheds. Antique Chevrolet radio, probably mid 40s. Here's a cool piece. Champion spark plugs decal on that window. I mean, there's a lot of old oil cans in here. Phillips 66 quart can.
Derby bucket. Probably some car parts in here, but not a huge amount. Spotlight mirror. Not a bad piece. Does can sell, but not everybody wants to drill their car to mount them. Here we go. Box of antique car clocks. Various stages of disrepair. I mean, just for sheer volume, there's a lot of chances to dig and find something. Kind of a cool old trash can there. My dad even has pretty good luck selling those at the flea markets. Just never know what you'll find. It's a treasure hunt. Several generations have farmed this place. This old concrete water trough. Got a date of 1939 on it there. Just kind of neat. See these old relics still out here like this. A lot of stuff to dig through. Probably 99% of it's trash, but you take a look. There's probably something hiding that somebody else hasn't seen yet, and that's what these places are all about. If you're not the guy with the energy and motivation and ambition to dig, then you're not going to be the guy that gets rewarded finding whatever little nugget there is. Or could be a pretty good nugget. It's like those guys out in the mines, for every pound of gold or silver that they have, there's probably a pile of several tons of worthless rock that has to be sorted next to it. The old cordless drill. Got the 
So you got that combine, right? Yeah. And would you give me 300 for the rest of the items in there? $100 bill. Hundred and a quarter. Hundred and a quarter. Fifty. One fifty. Seven hundred and seventy-five. Two. Two. Two and a quarter. Quarter. Fifty. Fifty-three. Three. Fifty. Fifty-four. Four. 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 Three. Seventy-five. Three. Seventy-five. Then four hundred dollars and a quarter. Four twenty-five. Four hundred dollars and twenty-five. But a 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 twenty-five. But a
with Chad of Nobody's Show. The big winner was the 1961 Cushman Eagle Scooter. The scooter was presented in excellent condition, and as such, it acquired a lot of collector interest from all over the area, and sold for a very strong price to match it. Proof that pride of ownership and good presentation help an item maintain its maximum value. Another big winner was the Tote Goat Scooter, which sold around $800 at the auction. Very strong price. The Tote Goat was built throughout the 1960s in well over two dozen models by Ralph Bonham. Ralph was an outdoorsman who enjoyed hunting and designed the Tote Goat to be able to move deer out of the mountains on his hunting trips. Bonham was a skilled designer and businessman, building the Tote Goat for over a decade. Later models were expanded to include a three-wheeler called the Lodestar 3, a street-based model called the Collegiate, intended for use on college campuses, also a mini bike called the Mini Goat. Accessories and even trailers were available too. The Tote Goat remains popular among a great fan base of collectors. So I did pick the old pair of boots out of the woods. Worthless, but unique and interesting, and just a little piece to kind of tell the story of the place. You can see they're totally worn out. They're used and used up. Got the paint out of the barn there. That stuff is all usable and oil paint really never goes bad as long as the can stays sealed. Got the zebra grapes box that it came in. Anything that's a specific type of animal, there's always going to be somebody that is into that type of animal and collects that stuff. A couple of these cans are kind of old and unique too for collectible purposes. The really oddball one is this telephone booth cleaner. Probably the most obscure thing we've ever had here on the channel. Another kind of obscure one is this Walmart brand spray paint, probably from the 80s. I've got some other Walmart cans, like old paper oil cans in the courts and things like that. So I always kind of look for that old Walmart stuff, just unique to show the brand history and kind of where a ubiquitous household name got its start. Got the stack of manuals. Didn't really have anything in them because they came with a pile of other stuff. Even a old road map in there. Got the Corvair body there with the Rambler nose. Neat old graphic art of the time on there. And then... Underneath, this is the golden book. So in here, it's just a lot of basic service tips. This is a great book because it also has troubleshooting in it. Most shop manuals don't have troubleshooting. They just kind of tell you how to take something apart. 